Hello and welcome to the PMBOK Guide Audio Digest Users Group. In this group, you'll come across different material to help you in your study for the PMP exam that may not be available on the CD. In today's module, we will be talking about the process map on page 43 in the PMBOK Guide, 4th edition. Looking at this process map, you've probably gone through it several times. You realize that at the top you've got the process groups, initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling and closing. And on the left hand side you have the knowledge areas, project integration management, project scope management and so on. Then in the middle in the gray area here you can see that you've got the processes, the 42 processes of project management as identified in the PMBOK Guide Force Edition. There's often a tendency to think that in project management, you initiate the project, after which you plan the project, and in that order you move into executing the project and monitoring and controlling the project and then closing the project. However, that is a misconception because even though you initiate the project once and you go into planning the project, you don't end planning the project at that first iteration. You see, project management, managing projects, is an iterative thing. You keep on planning until you get to the end of the project. We'll be looking at a page in the PMBOK Guide, 4th edition, to further illustrate this. But for now, just think about the fact that if you were planning a project, you would of course have to collect your requirements and define scope create your WBS and move down that hierarchy. However, you find out that as you progress through the project, planning the project, once you get to sequence activities, you realize that you actually need inputs from develop human resource plan, for example. You need to have an understanding of when resources are available in the organization to perform the work. You even need to have an understanding of who is available to you in the organization before you sequence the activities. Once you've got an idea of that, you move through sequencing the activities to estimating the actual resources that you need. In order to estimate the resources you need in a realistic fashion, you should know which resources are available. Again, it goes back to having some inputs from Develop Human Resource Plan. In addition, when you move into estimating activity durations, you need to have at the back of your mind different risk scenarios that might occur in the project. As a result, you need to have started planning risk management. It's not uncommon for several processes in planning to be done simultaneously in parallel by different teams. You could have one team working on the scope, another team working on the schedule, you even have other teams working on procurement. I've been in projects where the procurement team is working on what needs to be purchased. So they actually get an input from people planning the time aspect and the scope aspect. But that doesn't mean it's the same team doing everything as far as planning the project goes. Also, talking about cost management, in order to effectively plan for cost, you need to know the potential risks. You also need to know the potential resources that would be working on the project. You also need to be aware of quality. So when you are looking at page 43, even though it's good to understand the order by virtue of the knowledge area order, and also in the process groups, it's good to understand the order. But have at the back of your mind that even though you are presented these processes in this order, that is not the order that processes of this nature occur in the real world. You don't plan time, and after you've planned time, then plan cost, and then plan quality, and then plan human resources. You plan time, and you get inputs to plan in time from human resources. You get inputs for planning time from project risk management. And then as the project moves into executing, you still have change requests that are being made to the project management plan. So don't think that once you're done with the project management plan in planning, that's it. Or once you're done with collect requirements, that's it. 
There's a lot of iterations of these processes all through project management. And then you move into monitoring and controlling. You still have lots of iteration because you need to remember that when you are monitoring and controlling, you come across defects. You have to plan for how those defects will be managed. That's still planning. So planning is iterative. Executing becomes iterative as well because if you have a change request from monitoring and controlling and you want to reprocess how you plan to execute the project, you still have to execute the project with that new plan or you have to recreate the deliverable with that new approach to doing it. So you move back into executing and then you move into monitoring and controlling again. And if that isn't good enough, there will be several iterations between planning, executing and monitoring and controlling. When you get to closing, indeed, that is where you finally close out that endeavor or phase. And that makes sense in that you have initiating happening once, you close out your project once, but planning happens iteratively. Executing may happen iteratively, especially if you have change requests relating to the project deliverable. And then monitoring and controlling, the same thing, it happens iteratively. So when you look at this table, don't misunderstand the intent of the table. Information has to be presented in a certain fashion and that's why you have it in this order. That is not to say that in the real world, when we are in executing, we direct and manage project execution, then we move into perform quality assurance. That is not the case. In fact, let me call your attention to project integration management. All the processes that you see up here are aimed at integrating the processes that fall beneath them, for the most part. Except in the case of initiating where you have developed project charter and identify stakeholders that are very different. In planning, you have developed project management plan. All these processes underneath that are aimed at developing the project management plan. And the developed project management plan process coordinates all these processes and integrates the outputs of all the processes that you see from scope down to procurement. In the case of executing, direct and managed project execution is the integrative effort at integrating all the processes that fall in executing. And then monitoring and controlling, you see that all the processes that fall underneath the monitor and control project work process are aimed at monitoring and controlling the different knowledge areas. Verify scope and control scope are aimed at monitoring and controlling the project scope. Control schedule is aimed at controlling the schedule and the time aspect and so on. Then when you move into close project or phase, that is the overall process aimed at closing out the project or closing out the phase. You do have closed procurement, which is a subpart of closed project or phase in that closed project or phase closes out the whole project or the entire endeavor. Closed procurement closes out one part of the project or phase or endeavor. So you could have several contracts in a project. They could be closed out one by one through the closed procurement process but closing out the project as a whole or closing out the phase as a whole is done in closed project or phase. To further illustrate the point, let's examine page 41 in the Pembroke Guide 4th edition. In this figure, figure 3-2, process groups interact in a phase or project. You can see the different process groups, initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling, and closing. You can also see the level of interaction. On the left hand side, on the y-axis, you can see the level of interaction. You can see the process interactions between initiating, it happens at the start of the project, and tapers off rather quickly. On the other hand, you can see planning starts at the beginning, almost of the project, just after initiating, but it goes all the way almost to closing. You keep planning until you get almost towards the end of the project. And it happens in a cycle. It's an iterative cycle that keeps going on and on.
Immediately after planning, you see that the executing process group starts and goes all the way. You can see this overlap between planning, overlap between executing, overlap between the monitoring and controlling process group. And even going down into closure, you can see that throughout the project, from the middle of the project, you could be involved in closing processes, closing out procurements, perhaps the procurement ended early in the project, and then you have other procurements that may be ending later in the project. You have endeavors being coordinated as far as executing and monitoring and controlling go all throughout the project. So this figure should indicate that in project management, we don't think in a waterfall approach in that you don't have to absolutely finish planning before you move into executing. You don't absolutely have to finish executing before you move into monitoring and controlling or closing. Because that is a flawed ideology in which many project managers miss the reason why these processes happen throughout the project. Risk planning is done all throughout the project. There are times you have to go back to your risk plans and reassess. There are times you have to go back to determine the budget. There are times that you realize that your budget at completion is actually flawed. And that takes us to where we discussed TCPI in Chapter 7, Project Cost Management. We talked about the need to reassess the budget, the need to reassess the estimate at completion. You see, your TCPI tells you how realistic your budget at completion is and whether you should compute a new EAC. That goes back to the fact that projects are iteratively managed from planning all the way to closing. It's done in an iterative cycle. And that ends our module today on the Pembok Guide Audio Digest Users Group. Make sure that you frequent this page to learn more about project management and the Pembok Guide.